In late June, my friend told me to go watch a certain anime, and since I wanted to take a break from watching all of Monogatari in 4 months, I agreed to do so the next day. Flash forward to the present day, and I have an earnest proclamation to make to the world. I love Simple Gear. But we shall not care about For those of you unfamiliar with the franchise, Sensuki Sesho Simple Gear is a magical girl anime where the women attain mech like powers by singing their transformation chants, then continue to sing as they find ancient beings known simply as the Noise. But while this show may have a Monster of the Week structure, it's actually a character drama with structural similarities to Gurren Lagann and Killer Kill. Like the aforementioned titles, Simple Gear has excellent action scenes that oftentimes favors insane, awesome fun over maintaining tight logic. And while it also has an excellent soundtrack, memorable characters, and straightforward plots that are forthright and well thought out, Simple Gear stands out enough to be truly unique. The innumerable insert songs are integral to the character development and growth as they overcome their personal issues and it all ties into Simple Gear's resonant themes. The relics, once activated, release a vast amount of phonic energy, a phonic gain, that is converted into the armor and weapons of the Simple Gears. The gears are integrated into the user's bodies and grant them superhuman abilities and additional weapons and endless ammo can be created from the phonic gain released. Consequently, our protagonist can pretty much do anything. Gankata, check. Launching yourself into the air and diverting an incoming armor covered noise from attacking your train, check. Dropping swords out of the sky as you escape a relic destroying beam, check. Piloting a mech, riding your scythe like a magical witch, using your cape as a dark mini tornado and sending it out as deadly tendrils, check, check, and triple check. If you can imagine it, they've probably done it or will do it in the future. My favorite action scenes include Tsubasa's kamikaze attack, the train fight, Hibiki's beatdown on the Nephilim, her race against time to stop Miku, the spike between lovers, the desperate stand against the Alkanoids, and the climactic battle against Carol. I'm grateful that Satoru Fujimoto encouraged Akifumi Kaneko to do more of what he wanted in GX because we got this as a result. And as the 301,655,722 locks on the simple gears, which are in place to ease the user into outputting greater opponent gain over time, and not harm themselves in a typical battle, are slowly unlocked as the protagonists use their gears to become more confident in themselves. More abilities will become available. The locks are also released temporarily when the bonds between gear users strengthen and the girls sing together. This gives Kanigo the freedom to do whatever he wants in each subsequent season. Additionally, each character has their special attacks accompanied by beautiful still shots and stylized names. And they're not all the same. Shirabi's attacks have Greek, Japanese, and German words in their names. Kirikas are named after places and characters from various fairy tales. Chris's reference rock bands such as Megadeth and Iron Maiden, as well as the mobile Suit Gundam franchise. The most obvious being Billion Maiden using the same projectiles and firing pose as the Heavy Arms Custom, and the special moves with the Ayo Getla are accompanied by a twinkling sound, since the gear means silver arm or hand. These flourishes remind me of Western superheroes, and this is most evident with the American comic book style of Canada's moves. However, Hibiki doesn't have any attack flourishes, but it'll become clear as to why that is later on in the video. According to Kaneko, the heart of Noriyasu Agematsu's original draft of Simple Gear was the idea that songs are the world's common language, and thus Agematsu and other composers from Elements Garden 
composed amazing soundtracks that had JRPG influences and featured a plethora of character insert songs that involved the use of anime songs. While insert songs are a staple of anime that is used to set the tone or reveal new insights into characters, it is more uncommon that the actual characters sing them. When this does happen, these songs are more memorable because they're coming from the characters that you've grown to love. Simple Gear takes this where no anime has gone before, where as of episode 11 of the 4th season, there are 68 unique songs, including the Opies and Eevees, by one or more of the characters. This doesn't even include the CD exclusive songs, and I thought that Grimgar, Fantasy, and Ash had an impressive quantity of songs. These songs aren't all J-pop either. Each character sings in a different style, from Celtic to traditional Japanese to symphonic rock. And the Seiyus are incredible singers, so along with the great lyrics and composition from Elements Garden, the songs range from above average to inspiring. The incredible Nana Mizuki who voices Tsubasa sings every OP, and Ayahi Takagaki, the voice of Chris, sings each ED. And the songs are even sung in different languages sometimes, as Dark Oblivion is sung entirely in English, Kyuka sings in Japanese and English, and Ayu Koji is sung by Hibiki and Genjiro in Cantonese. Seriously, I hyperbolically lost my mind when Genjiro started singing. Then I found out that this was a song sung by Jackie Chan in the Police Story movies. Everything about this training montage is amazing! <laughs> But it gets even better, where X Simple Gear excels is in having them either reflect the personality and struggles of the singer, or in having many of its songs reflect the themes of given scenes. Consequently, these songs carry so much more weight. Take for instance, Maria. Back in G, she depended on Nastasha and her memories of Serena for emotional support. She found herself under pressure as the active leader of the group, and she was conflicted on both the morality and the best course of action when it came to saving the world. Buried under her doubts and low self-esteem, she latched onto uncompromising power in order to block out all other thoughts. But she learned that this just didn't work. By being inspired from the compassion of Serena and Hibiki, she was able to bring the world together by opening herself up to them. Thereafter, she was able to stand on her own, without relying so heavily on Nastasha and Serena. But while she got an idea of what being a strong person meant, she had yet to explore it. She was proactive in fighting her hardest in GX, but she didn't know where her true strength lay. This was seen clearly when she tried to employ the Ignite module through brute force, and failed. She failed because she tried to disregard the weakness that is her low self-esteem, as well as the pain of not being true to herself, first as a fake vessel of Pine, then as a fake hero for the United Nations. It is only when Alf 9 reminds her to accept her weaknesses, shame and regrets, something which Maria already knew deep down and sang out in her battle song previously, that she is able to use the Ignite module. Maria then sings a little part of a song that reflects her renewed resolve as she fights Gary for the last time. <laughs> A great example of songs being used to convey the themes of a scene is in the climactic battle of GX. In the face of a foe with power rivaling that of God, will our protagonist be defeated? Will they lose face and give up? ミクは誰かを傷つけるだけじゃないって教えてくれたうっ枕を潰すこんな時拒絶反応<笑> 
ヒルここはこれを止めようとするパパの思い出認めるか認めるものかそれを否定する思い出などいらぬ全部燃やして力を出すAs Hibiki used the energy of seven billion and six climax songs to deliver one massive punch against Kale's giant mech, Glorious Break was playing. Tsubasa so sung the song in honor of Hibiki. She raised a prayer to the heavens and wished for one last spurt of strength. Even if she, Hibiki, and the others weren't allowed to wish, or even if their outstretched hands were rejected, they will go for that glorious break. They will hold on to that impulse for love and communion and shine bright. The song seamlessly transitions into Exterminate, a song of the present forming the miracle of tomorrow. I'm singing for your sake, so let's go forth into the future with hands joined. This was exactly what Hibiki attempted to do for Carol. Not as someone who is unrealistically angelic, but as a real, flawed human being, just like Elfman and their late father. And Carol finally understood and accepted them, after an eternity of grief and anger. Akimatsu brought the idea for this two song finale to Mizuki, who helped to make the songs, for which I'm forever grateful. As shown, these songs are crucial to both characters and themes. Each character's battle song reflects their mental fortitude, values, and inner dilemmas in that season. And looking at the character's songs throughout the series will show how they've developed and changed. Even the OPs and EDs accomplished this for both Tsubasa and Chris, respectively. Simple Gear has one of the most unique and compelling casts I've seen thus far, and this is largely due to their own hangups. And how they overcame them and grew with the support of their friends. My favorite Simple Gear character, Tsubasa, exemplifies this. At the age of five, Tsubasa was discovered to be a natural candidate for the Ame no Habakiri and was forced by her grandfather to train as a Sakimori ever since. A Sakimori roughly translates to protector with similarities to the samurai. Because of this lifestyle and her father rejecting her attempts to bond with him, she developed a deficiency in social skills and became overly shy. But when Kanade abruptly entered her life at age 12, Tsubasa was finally able to have a friend that she could share her dream with, to share her song with the world. But unfortunately, this happiness was not to last. And at age 15, Tsubasa blamed herself for failing to protect her one friend. Since then, she hardened her soul and became a living sword through and through. She built a mental wall to protect herself from losing anyone ever again. And it blinded her so much, she refused to connect with others through either song or conversation. But the futility of her ways became all too clear when she used her climax song against Chris two years later. Not only did she fail to defeat her, but she failed to attain the reprieve from the loneliness and despair she so desperately wanted to escape. The world would not let her meet a bloody end and disappear. 
After Kanade visited her in a coma and reminded her of the dream that she threw away, Tsubasa awakened to see Hibiki, the girl who she regarded as naive and useless, training hard with resolve clear in her eyes. Thereafter, Hibiki's ceaseless optimism and compassion inspired Tsubasa to change, and slowly she let Hibiki in, and she earnestly sung for herself and her fans. For the first time in two years, she was happy. In Chi, Tsubasa was reluctant to let Chris know how she felt, including her fear at losing Hibiki. But eventually, they both opened up to each other and cemented their friendship. In between this season and GX, she developed a deep friendship with Maria, who out of all her friends, she called by a given name. I'll let Tsubasa explain what she thinks of her. すごい迫力でしたね。さすがは海外のトップアーティスト。あれがマリアカデンツァブナイブ。第一印象いかがでしたか？可愛いタイプかな？え、可愛い？今のがですか？そうでしたっけ？彼女はこう散らかった部屋
突起物に身を預けたのは間違いではなかったのね三人とも丸くなったな<笑>な何を言い出すですかご飯が以前よりも充実してるとかありえないしおみんなの印象を言ったまでだがどうかしたのか天然でこの切れ味特にマリアが丸くなったなこの剣可愛くない Interestingly, Tsubasa's strained relationship with her father is based on Mizuki's background. Mizuki received intensive training since the age of five in order to become an end cast musician. Both Tsubasa and Mizuki tried to gain their father's respect on multiple occasions, but unlike Tsubasa, unfortunately, Mizuki's father died in 2008, one year before she achieved her family's ultimate dreams of appearing at Kohaku Uta Gassen and performing at the Tokyo Dome. Also, fun fact, this sketch of Tsubasa's was in fact an actual drawing that Mizuki made at the Simple Gear Live 2013 event. Hideo Ishikawa, the seiyu for Genjuro, called it the main event of the drawing game. The other protagonists are just as interesting. There's Maria, who I've talked about already. There's Kirika, whose naive, upbeat personality hides low self esteem that she tries to remedy by focusing on bettering others' happiness, oftentimes to an extreme degree. There's Shirabe, who is a lot like Tsubasa. But like an earlier and younger version, she, ex- she can't express herself easily. But behind her cold faced persona lies a girl who cares deeply for her friends. Chris struggles to cope with her past, and in accepting that she deserves friendship like everyone else. And Gendro is just awesome. So much care and attention has been put into the designs and conception as well. Shirabi's hairstyle not only looks like a rabbit, but it's also very similar to Phoenix and Ryoko's. Her surname, Tsukuyomi, is Japanese for moon reading and is short for the name of the Shinto moon god, Tsukuyomi no Mikoto, while Kiriko's surname, Akatsuki, is Dawn. And like how the moon depends on the sun to shine, so too does Shirabe depend on Kiriko for emotional support, as she is still her one true friend. Shirabe has her adorable, and Kiriko has her. Tsubasa's hair has the shape of an eighth note. Chris is shorter than is usual for girls her age and eats messily because of the impoverished conditions she endured as a child. Hibiki sometimes sings of the future, which is also Miku in Japanese. Speaking of Hibiki and Miku, there are a lot of lesbians in this show. Kiwika and Shirabe, Carol as shown by her auto scores, needing to kiss each other in order to share the energy of memories, possibly Tsubasa, and of course the most adorable couple here. Miku is basically Hibiki's wife by this point. You may have wondered why I haven't talked about Hibiki much. Well, that's because she's the main character and what a fantastic lead she is. I honestly don't know if I like Shirabe more than Hibiki or vice versa. It doesn't surprise me why I like Shirabe and Tsubasa so much. I relate to them a great deal, and Shirabe is so cute. But Hibiki is really something else. Maybe they're just equal in my eyes. Anyways, her characterization is tied with the show's themes, so let's move on to the final stretch. There are two themes that I could see in the first three seasons, and the first theme can be credited to my friend. This is the application of the principles of alchemy to the concept of the hero deconstruction, analysis, and reconstruction. Each of these principles can be assigned to each season, respectively, like so. In season one, Hibiki obtains amazing power, and she's eager to use it to help others. But in her naivete in trying to replace Kanade, Tsubasa became hostile and attacked her. This friction lasted for a whole month and worked against Hibiki's goal. Only when Tsubasa critically injures herself from a climax doll and Hibiki learns of Tsubasa's past does she realize how she hasn't taken her new role and responsibility seriously. As for Tsubasa, by shutting everyone out and blindly resorting to violence, she couldn't stop Fine from killing more innocents after she incapacitated herself. And Chris, she blindly followed Bine's orders because she thought this would lead to peace. But not acting on your own free will won't give you your justice, as Chris found out the hard way. In the end, Hibiki led both Tsubasa and Chris on the correct path to save others. After some introspection, Hibiki realized that she didn't want to help others out of guilt for surviving the tragedy of this Wei Wing concert. She wanted to do so in order to bring peace, to foster understanding, to make friends. And she learned that she needed to open herself up to others to do this. As shown by Miku pushing Hibiki away, because she was upset that Hibiki didn't tell her of her new and dangerous war. So, by singing her song and extending her hands, Hibiki was able to bridge the gap between her and Tsubasa, and Chris, and Miku. 
Even Pinay came around and passed on in peace, even though it resulted in collateral damage and an impending disaster that would set up events in G. Meteoroid falling, burning, and disappear. Then. The concept of a hero is explored further in G, where the FIS girls are attempting to save the world from the falling moon. Jurabe, who had grown to distrust both the scientists at the Receptor Children program and Dr. Rare, a man obsessed with being a hero, labeled Hibiki a hypocrite for wanting to save people despite being known as the hero of the Luna Incident. This troubled Hibiki, who again experienced the survivor's guilt that originated from this way wing concert. Did she really want to save people? Or was she fooling herself? But Hibiki showed time and again that her desire to save others was genuine. She protected Shirabe and Kiriko from possibly killing themselves with her climax songs. She helped evacuate the citizens at the tower without her gear. She risked her life to stop Miku from overusing that Shen Shoujing and killing herself, and to convince her to accept Hibiki for who she was, because she couldn't bear to live in a world without her. And even without Gungnir, Hibiki still moved forward to stop Maria and Dr. Vera, because she believed in a song in her heart. Meanwhile, Kiriko in her naive, hysterical efforts to protect the world and Shirabe before she lost her soul to Pinay, became unreasonable to any objection, and she failed to understand Shirabe's concern for her and her group's amoral actions. And Dr. Vera was so obsessed with being a hero because he deeply admired Hibiki and company, the heroes of the Luna Incident, and the power of the Simple Gears. In his insanity, he thought that he could be a hero by repopulating the Earth himself after the moon crashed. To this end, he killed people without a second thought, brainwashed Miku, and treated people as tools, or as things to be saved. But in the end, the world was saved, not by those who sought to be heroes, but by those who didn't. Maria tried to unite the world with her song of justice and power, but she failed. She failed because she was singing at them, not with them. It is only when Serena reminded her that compassion wasn't something to be avoided, but embraced. Only when she sings Apple, a soulful song that questions where one belongs in a world without a common language, does the world sing with her. The combined phonic game overworld the lunar ruins and set the moon back onto its orbit. Humanity was worth saving. For in the distance, that day, that star became music. In the end, you can only save those through mutual understanding, by regarding people as real human beings and listening to them. And you don't need to have a simple deal to do that. Reconstruction can be applied to GX, as we now expand on its theme of heroism to its furthest. GX is a story of fixing that which is broken. In the end, Hibiki was able to mend her broken heart by believing that her fists weren't just for punching. Her fists are also the bonds that bring people together. And she succeeded in inspiring her father, who was like Hibiki before this Ray Wing concert. A coward, weak, and ordinary. By exposing her vulnerable side, which she only did to Miku, and by showing her courage against Carol to him, she inspired him to be courageous, to redeem himself, and to fix the family that he abandoned. Tsubasa also mended her relationship with her father, and the FIS girls were able to feel like they belonged in their new family. Kibiki also managed to save Carol, who was both blinded by hatred towards the human race and by her father's dying words. Hibiki and Elf-9 reminded her of what her father really wanted her to do, to learn everything about the world through alchemy, and to use that knowledge to bring people together. Hibiki convinced her to keep living, to start over, and Carol gave her body to the dying Elf-9 so that Elf-9 could carry on their father's wishes, believe in justice, and hold a determination to fist. While I'll admit, that the application of these alchemical principles to the three seasons can be picked apart, I think it works on a macro level. You could even apply them to GX itself, in terms of how the protagonists lose their gears, look deep inside themselves, and overcome their fears and insecurities, and come out all the stronger. Now on to the last topic. A long, long time ago, humanity shared a common language. But as punishment for Pine building a tower that would reach the heavens, the custodians took that away. They took it away by, by transforming the entire moon, that which symbolizes the rhythm of time itself, into a device that prevented its usage. When the people tried to communicate with each other, all they could hear was babble. 
and so they dispersed across the world and developed their own languages and cultures. They fought each other due to misunderstandings and discrimination, and they created the noise for that express purpose. And even though alchemy was created to bring about peace, they killed Kill's father for creating miracles that they could not understand. This is the curse of Belal. Bine was a priestess during the age of Babylonia, when being weak meant death. Sick of how things were, she vowed to reunite and rule humanity through pain, so that the strong remained and the weak were forced to become strong, lest they perish. She vowed to accomplish this no matter how long it took because she loved God, although it's unclear if this is genuine or just an excuse for her ambitions. Given how her soul divides time and space, it makes sense that she is symbolized by the butterfly, an insect that represents rebirth or transformation. She goes to great lengths to achieve her goal. She researched and tested the Nehushtan, which granted invincibility. The relic is a reference to the staff adorned with a bronze serpent that was granted to Moses by God. This staff protected faithful Israelites from the fiery serpents sent by God to punish those antagonistic to God and Moses. Through funding given from the success of the Sakurai theory and the simple gears, she built Kadinga, also known as the Tower of Babel, in secret in order to destroy the moon and bring back the common language, thereby allowing her to reach out to God once more. The debris from the moon would wreck the planet and the chaos would allow her to take control with Solomon's cane, which was awakened by Chris. The Hibiki taught her that this was wrong. Hibiki Tachibana translates to a standing flower's echo. Hibiki carries on Kanade's spirit and dreams, a song inside her heart, a song that touches other hearts. Hibiki stood tall, she never gave up, and she wanted to let her song echo throughout the cosmos and entrusted this dream to Fine before Hibiki and company went on their suicide mission to stop the falling moon fragment. It was because of this resolve and courage and determination to join hands in unity that Pine finally understood Hibiki. Because of Hibiki's words, she selflessly sacrificed her soul to save Shirabes and asked her to tell Hibiki to keep believing in her song and to share it with the future. The world has no need for ghosts. They need a human being. In a season 1 interview, Kaneko says, When I saw the name Hibiki on the notes I received from Mr. Akimatsu, I realized that this girl's story would not be about how she grows up on her own, but rather how she resonates with others and grows with them. Through her own struggles, and the influences of multiple characters such as Tsubasa, Chris, Miku, and Pine in the first two seasons, she ultimately found the power to connect with others, helped others grow, and recovered the confidence and happiness she lost after the Sway Ring concert tragedy. But while it is important to never give up and to offer your hands and your song, this wasn't enough for her to connect with her dad and Carol. This even happened in episode 8 of season 1, when Hibiki and Miku had their falling out. Well, Hibiki says that people she's saving have to be trying their hardest too. Mutual understanding can only be achieved when there is effort on both sides. But sometimes a person needs the courage to take that next frightening step. Hibiki provides that courage. She inherited Kanade's gunnier and song, but Kanade gave her something else too. The will to keep living. Pain doesn't unite us, it divides us. You can't unite the world by being a grand hero with dubious intentions. Oppression won't bring the people together. Companionship, friendship, love. Such bonds will bring the world together. Hibiki couldn't summon her lands for two seasons, but even now with an intact relic at her disposal rather than fragments, she doesn't use one, because her armed gear is her hands. The world doesn't need a common language if we have our protagonists to sing those songs and Hibiki to extend her hands out to us. This is what Simple Gear is all about. 
the over-the-top action scenes may catch our eyes at Hypersa, and I don't doubt the people that primarily love this series for that. But I also believe that it is the songs, the characters that sing them, and this theme of love and bonds that truly captivates this fan base on a subconscious level. This optimistic, hopeful message feels very relevant today, with the entire world connected yet deeply divided by cultural differences, apathy, and nihilism. It is no surprise to me that the show is set in the dark future, where America has fallen from its position as a superpower, and that Europe has economically collapsed into the dark continent giving rise to the new threat in AXN. Frankly, I didn't expect to love this show as much as I do, but I'm glad that I gave it a chance. Many of its ideas would benefit from more breathing room, like Phoenix's backstory and motivations and Chris's arc in GX, but on the whole, this is a series that I would love everyone to experience. Its song has reached me, and I hope it did for you as well. To end this video, I would like to quote my friend's reflections on Season 1. The songs of our hearts will ring through the universe. Even if they are not heard, they are felt, and they are shared as a symphony. That is why I am not afraid of death, and am ready and willing to embrace life. These stories never fail, because you can hear the song of those who conceived them. If you open your heart, you will hear the swan song of the Valkyries. And I know that I can get through anything. No matter how painful, because my song will always reach the ones that I love. I know that I can fly, and I will help others spread their wings as well. Listen to my song, as my voice heals the world, as the noise I utter brings not darkness, but light, not hate, but love, not death, but life. Keep moving forward, and don't give up on living and your song will finally be heard. Thank you for listening to the entirety of my video. Uh, hopefully this will be the first video in the series of where I will be expressing my, well, where I'll be expressing why I like all of certain series. There are two primary reasons as to why I wanted to uh, make, this, uh, make this video and hopefully make uh, similar videos in the future. Due to my love for anime, I watch a great deal of analysis videos on many series made by many of my favorite anime YouTubers. But what, what I've found over time is that those videos don't necessarily indicate why those people like this series as much as they do. Or, yeah. There are notable exception, exceptions that I've seen over time, such as the later reviews from Under the Scope, the Why You Should Watch This Anime videos from Super Eye Patch World, and some of the Digibuzz videos as well. And I was hoping to be able to contribute to to the contribute on that front and show why I like or love certain anime in order to share that passion with others. And the second reason being that 
there's a really, there's this one anime series that is that's actually my favorite, and I don't I haven't seen any videos that have gone into depth yet on why they love it so much. Yeah, so I was hoping that I could do that, but I would like to get some practice in first. So that would definitely will be a long time coming. As for the next video that I'm thinking of doing, it most likely will be about an anime that has idols in it. It's just coincidence that both that anime and Simple Gyo have idols in them. Anyway, thank you for listening to my little vlog here, and I hope you all have a good day or night.